Welcome everyone, I'm Joachim Rosenegger from Maritime Innovations. The maritime industry is facing a monumental challenge, it's decarbonization. We're flooded with talk of future fuels, but many decision makers are left feeling confused, uncertain and paralyzed. What if there was a practical first step you could take today? That's a provocative idea we're exploring uh, with our guest from Reptech. Let me introduce our guests. First, Dr. Ahmad Seilam, uh, he's a project leader at Reptech, and Dr. Seilam brings over 30 years of experience in R&D and technical leadership in physical chemical science with particular expertise in combustion, reactive systems, and thermochemical uh, technologies. He is an expert in reactor design, simulation, and scale-up with extensive experience in safety-critical environments and a passion for sustainable technology development. And Dimitri Cheburyokov, business development manager of Reptech. And Dimitri specializes in the industrial application and commercialization of next-generation fuel technologies. He is working at the intersection of engineering, sustainability, and business. He focuses on Reptech's modular container-based system for producing advanced composite fuels from heavy fuel oil, biodiesel, and waste oils. Dimitri partners with fleet operators, refineries, and port authorities to demonstrate how on-site fuel production can significantly, uh, significantly reduce CO2 emissions and logistics costs. Welcome to you both to our interview today. Thank you for your kind uh, introduction. Thank you, Joshim. Let's start with you. Why is there so much confusion in the market right now about decarbonization? Yeah, uh, uh, there is so much uh, confusion in the market right now about de decarbonization because there are a complex of a uh, huge number of options. Uh, for example, ammonia, methanol, hydrogen, but uh, that is uh, rather complicated. You, can, you can't just uh, pour it in a, fuel, in a fuel tank. So, and uh, in fact, we have a huge gap between the future promises and the current immediately regulatory requirements. Uh, everyone wants to, uh, and searching for the perfect, brilliant solution for today, but everybody talk about the tomorrow. <laughs> That's uh, some kind of, let's say, the industry uh, stuck between doing nothing and uh, the huge risky uh, investment. Uh, that, uh, that's, uh, that's the problematic of the day of today. So we are, we are working with uh, this problematic. We are trying to not talking about uh, black and white solution. Maybe we will not 100% uh, decrease the CO2 emission, but we will 30% decrease uh, the CO2 emissions. And for today, it's great achievement. Thank you. So there's a middle pass that everyone's overlooking that you're offering. Yeah, exactly. We are uh, we're offering today uh, existing, easy and uh, tunable solution, which you can apply immediately. Excellent. So the industry is stuck between a rock and a hard place. Uh, Dr. Asylum, your team at Reptech proposes a way out of this paralysis. Can you explain the core of your technology and the CAVI flow unit? What is hydrodynamic cavitation and how does it lead to such a significant emission reductions? First of all, I would like to thank you for your kind introduction. And at the beginning, I must clarify what is a cavitation. In fact, the hydrodynamic cavitation is the controlled creation and collapse of tiny bubbles in the flowing of liquid mixture. When bubbles collapse, this creates burst of heat, strong shear forces, and intense microscopic mixing. At Raptish, we offer inline cavitation module that can be easily integrated in existing fuel system. The flow pressure creates cavitation zones as the, as the effect happens in the fuel stream without any major uh, change to the, to the system. The effect is that uh, fuel breaks down into small particles, usually smaller than five micrometers. This improves atomization and led to more complete combustion. Uh, the effect that soot and unburned hydrocarbons are reduced, which lower directly emissions. The key point that cavitation is not only a powerful mixture, it acts also as an adjustable reactor. It helps activate, stabilize, and partially upgrading industrial fries of fuel, giving significant 
operational and uh, environmental benefits. That's actually a very interesting part here. And it sounds very impressive to me. Dimitri, what does this mean for a ship owner in practical terms? So if I install this, what changes and what stays the same? For the ship owners, uh, is pra in practical terms, it means the technology applicable immediately. It's available and uh, it's a drop-in uh, gravitation carry flow solution. It's uh, no requirement, and, uh, no request any engine modification, uh, no any, any new fuels type needed. So uh, it works with uh, any existing fuels, uh, HFO, MDO, biofuels, and uh, the, the solution is not require a request for additional pumps or any uh, any additional elements, complicated elements. Uh, you operate uh, operations continue as normal, but uh, the fuel works harder, burns cleaner, and the emission drop in uh, drop immediately. Yeah, thanks. I mean, that sounds very attractive, actually. And let me ask something about bunkering. So bunkering is undergoing a rapid change. New fuel types, stricter regulations, increasing pressure to ensure both the performance and the compliance. Dr. Asylum, how does Reptex uh, cavitation technology address this growing challenges in fuel stability, compatibility, and efficiency across such a diverse range of marine fuels? Today, bunkering is facing rapid change and operator must handle different type of fuels from heavy fuel oil, biodiesel, and even pyrolysis oil while meeting technical rules such as ISO 8270. This makes fuel stability, compatibility, and efficiency a real challenge. Raptish, in fact, cavitation technology helps solving this problem. It homogenizes all kinds of blends, ensuring that diverse fuel, sludge, and even residual water are completely and formally mixed. This improves combustion and increases engine efficiency. Uh, in our test, we observed up to 4% gain in fuel efficiency. At the same time, engines run cleaner. This reduces uh, operational and maintenance problems. In short, we can say that cavitation helps ships safely use a wide range of fuels uh, while uh, improving uh, performance, ensuring economies, and reducing cost. I mean, to me, it sounds like, uh, I mean, up to 4% fuel efficiency gain and reduced maintenance. That sounds like a quick win for, for, for ship management. Yeah. I really appreciate your important feedback regarding the 4% of gain in fuel efficiency, which can be translated into annual saving of about 500,000 euro per ship, which is, of course, a significant economical advantage. Dimitri, uh, for a ship owner, this isn't just about emissions. It's uh, about the bottom line. How, how does this investment pay for itself? Correct. Uh, investments pay for itself because we are concentrating for the two main things, for homogenization and for creation, the stable, uh, stable emulsion based on the additional components like a biodiesel, for example. And... Uh, uh, for example, heavy fuel oil contains uh, the complex of large uh, agglomerations of various size and densities, and it's difficult to burn. Our research confirms that uh, homogenization uh, by only 4% improves of fuel combustions. What does it mean? Less carbon deposit formation in the engine. Uh, engine life is longer. Uh, it's... Uh, cleaner, uh, the period of maintenance is longer, or could be longer, or at least cleaner. <laughs> so, and additional for that, uh, we're adding, for example, 20% or 25% of biodiesel. You can save uh, at least uh, 30% for the CO2 payments, 30% uh, decreasing the harmful emis emission and uh, just imagine that you can do it immediately right now with... Uh... It, it sounds truly amazing. So this isn't just a cost center for compliance. It's an investment into efficiency that pays for itself while securing the license to operate, I understand. Yes, correct. 
and uh, important that the technology is completely market ready and uh, it's tunable. We can adapt it for uh, any, uh, any existing uh, fuels and it completely uh, met uh, ISO uh, 8217 requirement and absolutely safe and easy. You know, uh, it's uh, safe, uh, easy and cheap. Let, let me ask you another question looking a little bit into the future. So this, this sounds like a powerful solution for today. But what about tomorrow? So is this just kicking the can down the road or does it fit into a long-term strategy with biofuels or other alternative fuels? Uh, yeah, correctly. That's technology completely adaptive for the, any type of uh, fuels, any type of uh, liquids, let's say, with any density, viscosity, and it tunable and scalable. The technology is scalable. It's important to, un uh, to underline because we are ready to any request. So, and for, uh, for today, for example, we can talk about the H4 and biodiesel for tomorrow about some other components. But uh, the, the efficiency of the technology will not decrease. So we are ready for as for today and uh, the same for tomorrow. I mean, this technology makes you more efficient today and better prepared for the multi-fuel future of tomorrow. I, I think it, it improves the performance of any liquid fuel you put through it. Yeah, any liquid, uh, any liquid with any density and any viscosity, because it's a unique painted technology based on the ultrasonic effects. It's amazing. I mean, it's, this has been incredibly insightful. I mean, for decision makers watching who are tired of the confusion and want to take a practical step. So what should they do as a next step now? Yeah, first of all, uh, they should go to our website and write, uh, write for us uh, the question. And we will immediately respond uh, for uh, pro pro proponing that uh, uh, we can run the test and show how it works applic uh, applicably for the, their current requirements. So other it's easy. Good. So my, my takeaway is don't wait, start reducing the emissions now and, and improving the efficiency today. So I guess it's, I, it sounds it's easier than you normally think. Yes, exactly. And please contact us and uh, be sure that how, how, uh, how it's easy and how it's available. Dr. Seilam, Dimitri Chebyukov, uh, thanks to you so much for bringing such a clear and compelling perspective to this complex topic. It seems the message is clear. The journey to decarbonization doesn't have to start with a giant leap. It can start with a single small step. It's an amazing story. Thank you so much to you both uh, for taking the time today for this interview. Thank you. I would like to thank you very much for your time and your objective questions. And I truly appreciate uh, the opportunity to discuss adaptive cavitation technology and share our perspective on its benefits. Thank you again. Thank you, Joim, for your question, for your interest. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Oh,